I can consider this as one of the best use of squeeze theorem. So basically this problem is from Cornell Lone Ballion and who published this problem in American Mathematical Monthly. Now let's uh, move on to what squeeze theorem is. So basically let's say we have to find a limit uh, exchange to some number a of f of x z f of x and we are not able to find it but let's say we have a function z of x which is greater than equals to it and we can find the limit exchange to a for this function and we also have another function which is less than or equals to it h of x and we can also find the limit extends to a for this function now let's say both of these tend to the same value let's say b and b so both of them are going to same value in that case this is also squeezed to be the b because b is less than equals to limit extends to a f of x is less than equals to b so therefore from squeeze theorem we can say that limit extends to a of f of x equals to b so this is what squeeze theorem is and we'll also try to squeeze this limit in between two or uh, different limits yeah now uh, let's try to see like how can we squeeze this in between okay so first of all let me write uh, this gamma function in terms of factorials because that will be easier to look at limit n tends to infinity uh, remains it of 2 plus remains it of 3 up to remains it of n minus 1 by not by sorry and over here we have n minus 3 factorial over here we have n minus 4 factorial and it goes in up to over here we have 0 factorial okay so basically uh, from downside we can uh, squeeze this by this limit limit n tends to infinity 1 by n minus 3 factorial plus 1 by n minus 2 factorial up to 1 by 0 factorial yeah because basically over here these are uh, numbers greater than 1 yeah this zeta to zeta 3 are greater than 1 that's why if you are removing such numbers to greater than 1 uh, this will of course be lesser or equal to yeah and uh, since the n is going to infinity this thing over here is will be going to e now from the other side uh, to find like what is this less than or equal to uh, we can use jb save inequality yeah so basically let me state what jb save inequality is so jb save inequality states that if we have two sequence a of n and b of n and a of n is an increasing sequence that means a1 is less than equals to a2 is less than equals to a and this is also increasing sequence now in that case in that case uh, okay if both of them are increasing mean of the product mean of the product will be greater than product of mean so this is the same inequality when both are increasing that means to i mean to say from this that let's say we have sum from k equals to 1 to n of a k b k by n this will be greater than equals to sum from k equals to 1 to n a k by n and sum from k equals to 1 to n b k by n yeah now and the other version of save is also that if one of them is let's say decreasing and the other is increasing yeah in that case in that case what we have is the sign of inequality reverses basically the mean of product will be lesser now the mean of product will be lesser than equals to 
product of mean yeah and this will help us to solve this problem uh, basically to find the upper bound sum from k equals to 1 to a yeah, why did i write infinity over here up to n up to n bk by n now we can also cancel one of these n's yeah and these are the chevy seven inequalities okay now for this problem we can see that we can basically see that uh, our zetas so our zetas value are decreasing yeah basically zeta of 1 is infinity zeta of 2 is pi square by 6 then pi to the power of 4 by 90 so basically uh, since these zetas powers are in denominators if they are increasing the values will decrease yeah that's why zeta of 2 is greater than equals to zeta of 3 is greater than equals to it goes on zeta of my negative n minus 1 and if zeta is infinity is there zeta of infinity is just 1 yeah whereas zeta of 1 is infinity so it decreases from infinity to 1 yeah now in in the denominator we know that n minus 3 factorial is greater than n minus 4 factorial but we are looking at 1 by n minus 3 factorial yeah that's why this will be smaller and now you might be able to see that there are opposite signs yeah so that's why we will use the second service of inequality and say that this is lesser than limit n tends to infinity of zeta 2 plus zeta 3 so on up to zeta n minus 1 yeah and then also 1 by n minus 3 factorial okay up to 1 0 factorial and divide by number of terms from 0 to n minus 3 is n minus 2 yeah okay so this is given by types of inequality now we know that this is equal to e because n is going to infinity now we need to find this limit if both of them ex exist at the in that time limit of product is just the product of limits if both of them exist yeah this exists let's see if this exists or not now for finding this uh, we can use Stoll's Cesaro theorem yeah Stoll's Cesaro theorem which states that let's say if we have two sequence a of n and b of n and b of n is monotonic yeah that means it's either strictly increasing and going to infinity or strictly de decreasing and going to minus infinity in that case or uh, in that case if this limit exists a of n plus 1 minus a of n by b of n plus 1 minus b of n yeah okay so limit n goes to some value a let's say k so if if this limit exists yeah not not okay if this limit exists yeah in that case this will also be equals to the other limit a of n by b of n yeah so basically if you want to find this limit when n is monotonic and going to either infinity or minus infinity we can basically use the other limit if this limit exists this is just like L'Hopital's rule but for L'Hopital's rule we have infinity by infinity form and zero by zero form yeah there's also in zero by zero form for extra Cesaro theorem but there is nothing as infinity by infinity but this is also there because uh, for this case a of n can be anything so basically both of them are valid for here as well even in both of the forms we can basically uh, if you have to find this we can use this limit if this exists now for this function as well if we suppose this as a of n and this as b of n we can basically find a of n plus 1 minus a of n yeah so after a of n plus 1 there will be zeta of n as well so subtracting these two we will just have zeta of n and b of n plus 1 minus b of n will just be n minus 1 minus n minus 2 is just 1 so now this limit will just be equal to uh, limit n tends to infinity of zeta n by 1 okay now we need to find zeta of infinity and we know that zeta of infinity in the limit it's just one yeah you can basically see it from the uh, sum definition itself so that's why this limit is equal to one 
Now both of them are existing. This limit is one. This is e. So we see that we see that this limit is greater than equals to e, also less than equals to e. Yeah. So that's why from squeeze theorem we we can say that in fact this limit is also equal to e. Yeah. In fact, this limit. In fact, this limit is also equal to e, and that is our answer. So this was a beautiful problem involving squeeze theorem, Chebyshev inequality, Stolz-Cesaro theorem, and what not. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and look forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos too.